Okay, so I wanted to circle back a little bit to HTTP and add some concepts to it that will help to increase our understanding of APIs. So we know that HTTP requests and responses are text messages being sent back and forth between a client and a server. And we know that for HTTP requests, they always start with this start line. And it consists of the method, the path, and the HTTP version. Now, so far, we've only been dealing with GET requests. But we do have other types of request methods. And we are going to take a look at that now and what they mean and what they're useful for. So if we go to uh, MDN, and you can just search uh, MDN HTTP request methods, and you'll get up a documentation page. Then you can see that we have these different kinds of methods uh, down the page here. And so far, we've been using GET, which is the request method that is used when you want to retrieve data. But that is not the only action that we can indicate. For instance, we have POST uh, when we want to submit something to a resource. Uh, often, if we want to create a new object and we want to send in some data, then we use POST to um, send that to the server. And uh, you have DELETE, which uh, specifies that we want to delete a resource. And all of this is kind of usually connected with um, doing operations on a database and doing something that is called, um, let's write it out, CRUD. And that stands for create, read, update, and delete. And that's just a acronym for doing, um, for a common set of actions uh, that we are doing in web development. So often we are doing these um, actions on resources. And we'll take a look at that. I don't want to get into that too deep now. But I wanted to focus on the request method. So you see we have app.get here. And we are receiving a get request. Or I'm going to try to put this in another way because I want to be really exact here. What this statement here is doing is that we are telling Express that when you, when the Express server receives an HTTP request with the request method of get on the path slash hello, then we want Express to execute this function. All right, so if we remember back to when we created our own web server, we were able to receive the request, read it, and then do different actions based on that. So Express is doing the same thing. It's just abstracted uh, away from us a little bit. But getting back to the request methods, say that we wanted to, instead of doing sending back hello here in this um, handler. We wanted to do app.get and on the same path, we want to send, I don't want to say hello to you. All right, so let's try that out and we'll stop the application. And we'll start it up again. And let's go to our browser. And we'll refresh on localhost 3000 slash hello. And nothing's happening. It's still showing us hello. And that's because these two are conflicting. So here we have two handlers registered on the same path with the same request method. So we have nothing to separate these two get, re get requests from each other. 
And we don't know what to do then because structurally the messages are the same. So Express doesn't know which of these handlers to fire. And then it just falls back to the default, which is the first one that was registered, which is this app.get slash hello. Now we could change the order of this, put this one on top, and we could stop the app, start it up, and refresh in the browser. And then we would get that result instead. But it still doesn't solve the problem that we are going to have a finite number of endpoints, which is what we call these paths, which is kind of like endpoints is an entry point into our application. So we are sending a request an HTTP request to that entry point, and then the application decides what it's going to do, or the web server decides what it's going to do. And we're going to have a finite amount of those endpoints, and especially uh, when we're dealing uh, with resources that we are giving names, which we'll take a look at um, in, I think, maybe the next one. But so that's when the verbs come into play, because they can help us separate our entry point. So let's say that instead of saying app.get, um, we are doing app.delete, which is, if we go back to our documentation and we go to the request method, then we have this verb here called delete. And usually it's used to delete a specific resource. So let's click on that. And then you can see that um, a delete request usually has this start line of the HTTP request. So instead of get some path and the HTTP version, we now have delete. So let's see what happens when we add a delete method here. So make no mistake, what we're doing here is we are telling Express that when an HTTP request with the request method of delete and the path of slash hello is sent to the web server, we want to respond with, uh, okay, I'm gonna switch this around. We want to respond, respond with, I don't wanna say hello to you. And then we'll just put that up here. And we'll hit save and restart. Okay, so let's go ahead and see what happens when we re refresh on localhost. Now we have hello because that is the get request. And in order to send a delete request, I am going to use a program called Postman which is a tool for sending, easily sending requests to an API. So I usually use that when I develop. And what we can do here is we can say HTTP colon localhost 3000, and we want to send a delete request. Now, if we hit send, Oh, I need to add the path of slash hello. And we want to add colon slash slash here. All right. So now you can see we sent a request, delete request to HTTP localhost 3000 slash hello. And the response was, I don't want to say hello to you. So now we have two different entry point with the same path that is differentiated by the request method. And that allows us to effectively scale up the amount of endpoints that we can have. And it allows us to effectively group resources together. And we'll take a look at that, I think, in the next video. Uh, we might have to also take a look at HTTP status codes but uh, we'll see what order we do it. But for now, just remember that we have request methods that allow us to 
differentiate between entry points. All right. And if you want to learn more about request methods, you can go to MDN and you can take a look at the HTTP request methods article and you can read about the different ones there because there's yeah, there's a fair amount of verbs that we can use to uh, send our HTTP requests. Okay, that's enough for now. Thank you for tuning in and I'll see you in the next video.